shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to part three of the U9 U-Boat build. So in the last installment, got everything painted up, right? Got the light gray put down in distress, we got the dark gray put down, we did some variation in the deck panels, that kind of thing. We even got the canvas around the flying bridge knocked out. In part three, it's about everything after that. So we have to deal with some decals, we have to deal with a bunch of little shit that has to get painted, and then it's on to weathering and final finishing. So first up for the decals, because decals involve water, water typically breaks up hairspray and can lead to more chipping. We don't want that to happen anymore, so I need to seal in the areas where the decals are gonna go. But to do that, I'm gonna be using some MRP semi-gloss. All right, to start the painting of the little stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and get these four red bell things painted up. And for this, I'm gonna start with a base of MRP Primer Red. Yeah, I know I probably should prime them, but they're little fucking things, and I think I can get away with it. Because they don't have to be masked or any of that kind of stuff, so. Those aside for a minute. I'm also gonna get the life preservers. Now these will not be the final colors for either of these. It's a good base to build from. All right, next up is the wooden deck for the top of the conning tower. And this is one where the instructions basically say, eh, we don't know. They say it could be gray, they say it could be deck tan, which I translate deck, deck tan as bare wood or stained wood. So I'm gonna go with that, and I'm using some MRP 226 sand to make that happen. At least the first stage of it. Because this is gonna be a simple wood grain exercise. Except for the little circle there that's gonna be gray. But we'll get to that later. Okay, that was easy. All right, next up are the two screws, and these need to be bronze according to the painting guide, and I'm not sure if I have bronze. Um, I've got, I think I have brass in all clad, and I've got copper in MRP, so brass might have to be good enough, or brass with a little bit of copper in it to dinge it up. We'll see. Anyway, to get these started, I'm going to bring in my favorite for prepping for bare metal, and that is some Guns GX2. This is a gloss black. It is thick as shit, and it likes to go on wet. It also likes to go onto bare plastic. Now, the fun thing about these is they have a very, very shallow mounting hole. And I've trimmed these toothpicks to fit in there as snugly as possible, but I'm still worried about spraying across the back of these things. So we shall have to see how it goes. My biggest fear is blowing them off of the toothpick while they are all nice and wet and drying. Okay, so here's this guy. I'm gonna set it over on my little Tamiya paint thing to dry, come back and get the next one, and we'll be moving right along. Okay, so I've given these bell things a little bit of time to dry, and I've hit them with some hairspray. Now I've got MRP42, which is this Russian chassis cover red, and it's got a bit of a tomatoey look to it, which I think would work really well for this World War I era ship that probably wouldn't be painting like, you know, bright, bright red on things. A little bit more of a faded out look.
So I'm also taking that same chassis cover red, leaving what I have left in the cup, and adding a little bit of international orange to it for the life preservers. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Set these aside to dry. Move on to the next step. All right, the red bells have had enough time to set up that I'm comfortable coming in here and beginning distressing operations. All right, now it's time to go ahead and get the screws painted up. And for this, I'm using a mix of all clad polished brass and MRP steel, basically to kind of tone down the brass a bit, which isn't all that brassy looking in my opinion, and kind of set up a worn effect that I want to go for. Okay, I think that's looking pretty decent. Set that one back on the paint thing. Okay, and there is number two. Excellent. Okay, next up, it's time to apply wood grain to the wood deck. And for this, I'm gonna be using a trick that I kind of worked out on the B-17 build about a year ago, which is using some Vallejo acrylic instead of using oils just to move faster because this is a speed build after all. So I've got some Vallejo German camouflage pale brown and some leather brown basically mixed together. Don't want to go quite as dark as like chocolate or raw umber or things like that. And the idea is basically just roughly brush this on. Don't need to worry about being super smooth or any of that kind of stuff. Just slather, 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 slather. And once we have that in place, of course this time it's not gonna fucking work, is it? Okay, I think I've got an idea of what I can do to fix this. I'm going to add a few drops of acrylic retarder to this. That should make life a little bit easier. Apply it again. This time, let's hope that the retarder did its work, right? So that should just dry it on there before I could get to it. Okay, so there is a nicely roughed in wood deck. I think that'll work. Okay, so next I'm gonna take some Tamiya Clear Yellow and some Tamiya Clear Orange mixed together, add some Mr. Leveling Thinner, and just spray this on real lightly as sort of a stain, sealer, etc.
now that looks like a pretty well-trod wooden deck. Okay, so this is looking about how I want it. I'm going to let the clears dry up a bit, then come in and mask and spray sky gray for that circle there, which is the mount for the control wheel on the flying bridge. Okay, so I was planning to do some gray touch-ups and move straight into decals. However, I made the mistake of looking in the big reference book, and this painting guide is wrong. These stacks that are shown being just the same dark gray as the deck are not. <laughs> one of them might be, but the other one, you can tell, from, I'm not going to zoom out because I'm lazy, but as you can tell from all these photos, that shorter exhaust stack is white or light gray. So I thought I was out of the masking game, but I'm right back in it. Now, the problem with these is, A, they're already installed up through the bottom of the decking, so there is no way to pull them out and mask them separately. Also, the way that they join, if you remember from part one, is basically front half and back half clamped together. It's not two separate stacks. So I have to mask this one without painting this one. And that means masking. Okay, this thing is masked off. It's time to paint it. Okay, so the stack has been sprayed with some modern Italian sky gray and some hairspray, and now we're gonna chase it up with some modern Italian sky gray mixed in with some light arctic gray. Set up one of these chipping situations again. Okay, so I've sprayed and done the distressed chipping on the stack. A Little bit of a quick, dirty, sloppy job, but it'll work. Now, before I take all the masking off, I'm gonna come in with some Vallejo and basically just brush paint the support braces around these things. And I think I might also go ahead and deal with the top of the stack, which seems to have been black. So I'm gonna probably look at a reference photo or two real fast before I commit to that, but these are definitely getting painted. And here we are with a completed stack, not too shabby. Let's get on to decals. Okay, so it's time to start the decals, and I decided that I'm gonna start with the roughest of them first, and that is the flag. Now, I have never done a naval flag before, and since there's only one, I'm quite petrified, to be honest. But no time like the present to get the experience, and so this is where I get to say, hold my beer, I'm going in. Now the challenge here is that I have to fold this over itself and uh, I have to get some things in there while I do that. I'd say I'm not particularly looking forward to this little event, but uh, hopefully it goes well. Okay, we've got it sliding. I guess the angle doesn't really matter all that much. Okay. Got that there. Just a little bit of foil right in here. All right, now we need to get a rigging line. Put it in the middle as well. Come on, you. Thing is loving static electricity. All right. Now comes the fun part.
Okay, so that is happening. Holy shit. All right. So I have got a flag dangling precariously from this thing. To me, a decal adhesive and softener. And I'm going to set this somewhere safe to dry. All right, so next, let's go ahead and get these stencils on the Life Preserver Horseshoe Dealies. Hey, that wasn't so bad. All right, that's one down. I didn't think they would fit the curve, and they do. How about that? These things have been a little bit of a pain in the ass all along. Um, they came molded with a little clamp thing kind of <clears throat> on the top of the horseshoe, which obviously wouldn't work with the stenciling. So I got to cut that off and do some shaving down of parts to make it all work. Ah, mother fucking hell. I went to set this thing down and it flopped over. And the fucking stencil stuck to the... This is where you always include extra fucking stencils. That was intense. All right, let's do some easier shit now. How about that? Okay, next up we're dealing with the numbers. It's gonna go right here. And this is where it'll be fun to find out if the decal size and the painting guide and the placement of the water line and all that all agree. pretty fucking close isn't it okay so I've got the decals on like this one back here the depth gauge and you can see it's got a little bit of a decal sheen compared to the rest of the surface that should go away the second that we put a clear coat on it but before I move into the clear coat I want to pay a little bit of attention to the decking up here because it's nice and dark and I want to put a dark panel line wash in these various things but I also want to put some lighter tones down on top first. Uh, mainly things like Mr. Weathering Color and Multi White, maybe a little bit of Multi Gray in there as well, to basically represent salt spray and salt staining and lighten up these decks because the decks in the reference photos are certainly not uniform like this. And so once I start putting on something like the Guns Multi White, it's gonna flow right into all these panel lines and make them white and coming back over to do it with black or a darker gray. I totally plan to do, however, doing that on top of the multi-white that's on the surface will just smear it around. So I wanna put that stuff down before I do the clear coat for the decals, that way I can clear coat everything and then work on top of it. So with that, let's get a little bit of multi-white going. Now you might've seen me use this before in some other builds. If not, welcome to the party. This stuff is basically a highly thinned enamel type product, and this one happens to be white. I've also got gray, brown, black, etc. Basically, just 
come in here and kind of muck it around. We want to keep this from getting too accumulated anywhere. Just kind of smear it around. The Deerfoot stippler is amazing for this kind of work. And as this stuff dries, it tends to get a lot less opaque and it becomes almost more of a filter type of a thing. So you can kind of see like up here and back here how this is going to come out. See, it'll it'll hit any crevice that it finds and just flow into it. And so I'd rather have those crevices doing shit that we can come back and fill in later rather than doing black first and then trying to correct for this after the fact. Okay, so a lot of stabby anger at the decking later, and here is the salt wash, essentially, over the entire sub. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. It's a little bit stark at the moment, but you have to keep in mind that additional weathering is going to come in on top of this and kind of tone it down. And I basically just wanted this as a good ground for future weathering. So let's look at something else I got going on here. This is the damn flag decal, and basically, after putting it over the foil and running the rigging line through it, I've given it overnight to dry. It looks pretty decent, not my best work, uh, but I want to go ahead and kind of see if I can... mangle it up a little bit. But it's gonna be hanging off the back kind of like like that. So, so I managed to work the uh, rigging line in there a bit loose, which I gotta be careful with because I don't want to yank it out because it's not going back in. But eh, decent <laughs> kind of maybe. I'm not even gonna pretend that's my best work, but it's gonna do. Okay, so what's next? Well, I need to get in here and I need to spray a clear to protect the decals from stuff and to seal in the salt before I do other weathering. All right, so I have some ammo one-shot transparent primer, which makes a great acrylic clear coat. Okay, the next stage of weathering is to apply some panel liner. So I'm going to use some Ammo Deep Gray. Should work well on this top deck. Line that has the white shit in it. We can come in here and hit it with this. Okay, now this is the fun shit with uh, panel line washes, is removing it. Just a lot of Q-tip work. All right, so I've removed all the excess wash. We've got a nice grimy looking deck going on. Now it's time to move into oils and enamels and other fun shit. Okay, who wants to make some dirty canvas? So for this, I've got some Windsor & Newton Raw Umber and some ABT 502 Sepia. The goal is to take this nice beigey canvas and beat it up. Now this Raw Umber is frustratingly a little bit gross. Uh, it's a little bit dried out, so I need to get it a little bit wetter than it currently is. see the, <laughs> the 
this may not be happening. Let's get that chunk out of there. See if I can get a better pull off of it. It's not looking good though. Fuck. So basically I need to get a bunch of this on here first and then I can worry about blending it in, getting shadow shit going, all that kind of stuff. First we have to get it dirty. <laughs> it looks super sloppy right now. So here is the canvas with the initial coat of raw umber on it. It's meant to at this point look like dirty stained canvas and it's not really exactly where I want it but it's getting there it needs to dry up a little bit before I can kind of shift it around a bit more and there's a little bit of crud here I want to break up this took a lot more thinner than I anticipated it would just because this umber is around the bend Something I need to focus on as it starts to dry is getting it off of the high points of the frames. I might need to get a... You know, I do need to get a thinner brush with a little bit of thinner on it. Probably, if I want to make it this dirty, I probably should have made it a little bit of a darker color, but oh well. So I'm going to do a little bit more work around the side on this thing. Basically doing this, letting it dry a little bit more, and then coming in we're going to really work on blending this in before bringing in the shadow brown and making the shadows and stuff to really make this pop. Okay, so I'm now working some shadow brown into things. Very, very softly. It's getting late, so I'm going to set this down for tonight. But it's definitely a much different animal than when all this started. And this one little fucking peg back here keeps wanting to break loose, which is not something I'm a fan of. There we go. So that's starting to look pretty solid. This is just the raw umber side. This is the side that is having the shadow brown applied. And it's starting to look nice. 
Okay, so now that the canvas is pretty well sorted, I'm moving on to the main hull. And to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I want to dirty it up, but, you know, the same, like, streaking and shit that I can do up top doesn't really apply to a thing that sits in the water all the time. So I'm starting with a wash around the rivets and the various raised details using some ammo NATO camo wash, uh, MIG. 1008. It's a nice dark brown that looks more grayish, so I think it works nicely with the finish that is on the hole. And now that it's been kind of slopped on, it's a matter of just coming in here. Anchor this. And just Rubbing it away. Probably better at this with my right hand. So pretty much just like that. This is really boring work. So I'm not going to bore you too much with watching it all go down. There are like a million rivets on this damn thing. But basically anywhere that I'm not getting it up enough or I'm not happy with it, I'm going to come back through with a little bit of thinner, dampen on a brush and just kind of do a little bit of extra cleanup. But for most of the areas, I think the Q-tips will do the job. So I'm going to keep going here and pick back up once I get this done and once I get the other side done. Okay, so it's been a journey and a half getting the whole hit with that wash and then getting that wash wiped off. I've destroyed a lot of Q-tips in the process and honestly, it went a long way to kill my enthusiasm for the build. That's just, it's a big swath of shit to deal with and it's not fun to deal with. But that part is finally behind us and we can move on to some more exciting things. And so one of the things I'm doing is bringing in an armor technique that I picked up from Uncle Night Shift for chipping. And we're going to be putting a few of these along the sides of the hole. These are just little tiny dots of Tamiya XF-19 Sky Gray mixed with some white and some X-20A and some retarder. Nothing particularly fancy about it. It's just picking out some areas where we can add chips. And as these dry, we can come back in and add some darker chipping colors inside of them, give them a bit of dimensionality, all that fun stuff. Okay, so I've switched up paints. I wasn't happy with the Tamiya. It was a bit of a bother. So I've got a mix of various Vallejo and AK shit going on. Basically, it's the same idea, just tap, 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 tap. Just putting some little chips in here. Okay, so now that I've got a shitload of little chips painted all over this thing, it's time to go in and start adding chipping color to the inside of them. And for this chipping color, I'm using a mix of ammo shadow rust and ammo rubber and tires just to kind of gray it up a little bit and on some of the bigger ones I may come back in and add another tone on the inside a slightly more just rust tone but they're not all big enough to really justify it and this is a really challenging angled hit because the camera is literally right next to my head This isn't something I'm necessarily a fan of for aircraft because they definitely tend to chip differently because they're made of things like aluminum and 
titanium and shit like that. And so this dark chipping color doesn't quite work. They tend to have different chipping profiles, but I'm a huge fan of it now for armor. And I figure this thing is basically armor that floats. A lot of holding your breath when you're doing this too. Okay, so I filled in the various chips and here is where we have ended up. Now I will note that I have put more chips on the bow section than I have on other parts of the boat, mainly because that's the part that's cutting through the water. That's the part that's harder to reach for the crew that, I don't know if uh, World War One U-boats carried paint around to do touch-ups or not, but getting up here and hanging up the side and stuff is probably more difficult than doing touch-ups on say the conning tower. So that's my head cannon. Now this is probably a bit more beat up than you would typically see. Uh, the reference photos aren't great in a lot of regards and one of them is resolution. So it's really tough to necessarily make out details like you know various chips of rust and whatnot. However, uh, from a visual standpoint, I think this looks pretty fucking cool. Okay, so next it's time to go ahead and deal with these rivets along the upper portion of the hull. And so for this, I've got a mix of ABT 502 Starship Filth, Sepia, and Neutral Gray. Basically, you take a little fine brush. Give these some little dots. And that's pretty much it. Might come back and add a little bit of thinner to soften them up if they get a bit too stark. But yeah, nothing super about these. Just good old-fashioned oil wash. Okay, so we've got a bunch of chips and rust and things like that going on. And what happens to rust when it's exposed to water? It streaks. So it's time to add some streaks. And with this, I'm using Ammo's streaking rust effects feels apt. And then basically I'm just going in here and just dabbing a little bit, carrying it down. And grabbing a wider brush. And just dragging it along. Pretty much just like that. Nothing too fancy. All right, now we've got a bunch of rust stains and rust streaks. Gonna let these dry overnight. And I am hoping at the next bench session, I'll be able to pull this damn thing over the line. Okay, so I'm closing in on the end of the build and I'm starting to attach the final masts and outrigger dealies and all that kind of stuff. And these particular masts have one problem. So they basically install either with this post facing down or this post facing out to the side if you're gonna put them uh, stowed. However, the hole is in the gray piece itself, not in the hole. and there's not really enough space to get down there. So, I'm gonna trim it up a little bit. To give myself some extra room to work with there. And now it fits much better. Okay, so after a very hectic two and a half weeks, here is the finished U9 U-boat. 
Now this was definitely very much a rush job on my part, and if I'd been taking more time, I probably would have put together a bit more of a nuanced weathering job. Not relying so much on the rust chips and streaking and on the salt crap on the deck, but probably working in some additional, you know, darker oils and things like that on the decking. Paying a bit more attention to the stacks back here. These are basically just painted, very lightly chipped on the lighter gray one, some black pigment around the top. I probably would have paid more attention to the seam lines on the periscopes. Uh, done more weathering on them and maybe even a little bit of scratch building to pick up the detail a little bit more. But overall, two and a half weeks moving at warp speed, I think it turned out pretty well. And now that I'm out the other side of it, I want to step back and take stock of the build as a whole. So overall, I think the kit itself is really strong. It goes together well. Uh, a lot of things like, you know, the conning tower here, the antennas, the dive planes, these little outrigger doohickeys, they can all be pulled on and off at will throughout the build, and you don't even really have to glue them in when you're done. Like, I glued the outriggers, but the dive planes and the conning tower and even the canvas railing thing, they're all just kind of jammed in place. Same with the periscopes and the mast, these things. It's really nice and modular, which makes it a huge, huge advantage when you're coming in to do all the masking and painting, with the exception of these uh, whale harpoon things here that I really would have liked to do that with, but you pretty much have no choice but to glue them in because they are super fiddly otherwise. Detail is pretty good throughout. I really like slash hate the, all the raised rivets on the hull. I think they look great. Uh, dealing with them for weathering purposes is a huge pain in the ass, and it takes forever and it destroys a fuckload of Q-tips but I gotta admit, it looks really cool on the finished boat. I'm also really a big fan of the raised detail here on the conning tower, as well as the canvas effect that they got, you know, the canvas draped over the railings. Looks phenomenal. You know, probably one of the better effects of that that I've seen done in plastic. So kudos to DOS work for that. As far as things that didn't necessarily float my boat, there are a few. So just to start kind of at the front, moving back, the sausage lockers, I saw several reference photos in the book that comes with the kit that don't show any evidence of these on other boats. And that's fine, it's just frustrating if you want to not include them because there's basically just a giant blank space where they're supposed to install. So you accuracy fiends, if you're building, I don't know, like U12 or something, uh, that might be a bit of an issue. Another frustration is the lack of other deck armament outside of the machine guns. Apparently the machine guns were a very early war thing and they were replaced later on with other deck gun type things. And it would have been cool to at least have that option as opposed to just being stuck with the machine guns. And I realize it's 172nd and it's probably expecting a lot, but it would have been really cool to have some ammo belts or something like that uh, just to you know, kind of spice that up a little bit. Moving a little bit further back, these antennas, or mass, or whatever they are, are super floppy. They're like the, uh, they're like those, you know, springy door stopper things. And on the real examples of these things, there's all kinds of rigging lines coming off of this. And, I mean, any amount of tension on these things, and they're going to warp all over the place. And so, this is one where I'm hoping aftermarket comes through with some sort of metal replacements here because these things I don't think would stand up to the tension of rigging unless you're very careful and balance the tension across all the various rigging lines, which is way beyond my patience and capabilities. As we go, listen to that sound. As we go further back, same thing with this mask back here. It's very, very loosey goosey. Um, you know, if I hold it down here and, you know, I mean, it's very springy, that's problematic. Not the biggest fan there. Looks cool, but at the same time, a metal replacement of some kind would go a long way to letting us actually handle rigging this thing up properly. The exhaust, um, honestly, I don't know why they've, I don't know why they're meant to, like, fold back into the deck. I guess that's a submerging thing. At the same time, it's a huge pain in the ass because it'd be really nice to just be able to drop these in after you build the damn thing. 
and I would honestly go so far as to suggest cutting off the little mounting nubs that stick it into the deck on either side here from underneath and just placing it in later in the build. It'll make your life a lot easier because, you know, even though the painting guide says these things are dark gray, the reference photos clearly show that at least the shorter one on the majority of the boats is a light gray and or white. So, yeah, masking that is a huge pain. Um, also, masking it next to this other pipe, which I believe is an air intake, also not really all that fun. And I would have preferred to have seen something where maybe each pipe was separate and the fittings around them were also separate. And so you kind of, you know, slid the tubes in and these things basically fit up and then you plug them all into holes down here. That would have been, a, I think, a cleaner way to go about it. And honestly, it's something that, you know, could be done in brass or some other turned metal as well. So who knows, maybe aftermarket will come through for that. I don't know what... Um, what the propensity of aftermarket is for ship kits outside of wooden decks and fuckloads of railings that will drive you crazy. So if that's an option, that'd be a cool one to see. That is kind of the main stuff on the boat itself. I still have no idea what these red bell things do. Uh, I guess that maybe they ring them when it's time to get the sausage out of the lockers. Uh, who knows? The life preserver horseshoe things, pretty cool. Again, I had to cut off the front of these gray bracket things and kind of, you know, scribe in some detail to make it look like they're holding these things instead of just clumping over them. And the decal goes on there like it goes on and everything looks nice and fun. Uh, coming way around to the back. Try to see how far I can move this. There we go. Everything here is fine. Um, I have a lot of improvement to go on how I represent flag decals. That's the first one of those I think I've ever tackled, and eh, it's okay. <laughs> I won't call it good by any stretch, but it's on there. So, yeah, overall, <laughs> overall, that's the U9. Uh, my take on it is it's a very good kit. Could probably use a little bit more information and context and options in the instructions. I wouldn't have minded a little bit more detail in the painting guide, particularly like the dive planes, that just top-down view doesn't really tell you much of what's happening. So that would have been good. Having the exhaust stacks called out properly would have been good. But still, I think overall, DOS Work did a bang-up job on this kit, and it definitely has size and presence going for it. So kudos to them, and uh, thank you again to Patrick Perales for shooting me an early copy of this to build and review. It's been a fun diversion, and I am now going to go ahead and get back to the P40 that has been sitting there throwing uh, jealous eyes over this thing for the last two and a half weeks. So thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed uh, watching me stumble my way through a boat kit, and I will catch you later.